60% of the assets now indexed or based on some kind of technology that's assembled together. What's the future for people in the financial service industry? Well, I think it's uh, not just the financial futures industry, it's uh, every industry. You take blockchain and you look at how um, that exists and you take algorithms. Um, and so we're uh, in a world where you are either going to be writing code and writing algorithms or you're going to be displaced and lose your job to those algorithms. Um, you know, something like over the next 20 years, something like 40% of all jobs um, are likely to be lost or certainly threatened. And so um, that's just the reality. And so uh, I think the education of speaking, uh, knowing how to write code is like knowing how to read and write. Um, so we're in a situation where um, uh, you know, it's fantastic and it's terrible depending on your where you are, right? It's the fantastic leverage. So I would say for all of you, um, as it has been for me, if you put somebody who knows how to write code at, next to you and then you think um, whenever you're making a decision, what are my criteria for making that decision? And you slow yourself down and you write them down. That's why I wrote these principles. And then there's economic. You could convert those principles, which are in words, into equations so that the data can come in and make and operate in parallel with you. And that is a f that you must do. That is a phenomenon that in order to be competitive is, is necessary. So I think that's what the future looks like. Um, I think that's where we're heading, and it's in many ways terrific. But behind it, of course, is the disparity that it produces in income and opportunity, and it produces a lot of people who are then left behind, and we have to deal with that issue, that issue too. Um, yeah, it, I'm operating, uh, the way it works is our investment processes, which are our thinking, expressed in algorithms work in parallel with uh, my individual decision making. So it's like uh, operating with a computer chess game. In other words, I have a computer chess. Or maybe think of it as like a GPS. This GPS is giving me instruction, and I'm making my decisions in parallel. And then because that's a great partnership, um, I can then um, say, if there's a difference in our decision, why does that difference exist between what the computer's telling me to do and what I would tell to? And then I go back and reconcile it. So I could say, um, is, the com is the algorithm uh, missing something, or am I missing something? Most of the time, I'm missing something. Because what the computer can do is it can process a lot more information. It could do it a lot faster and a lot less emotionally. Um, but there may be times where um, uh, I'm seeing something that isn't properly in there, and I can take that and then convert that to a modification in that to improve the computer decision making. So the parallel, uh, you're, you're in a world in which that parallel is the future. And a lot of things also don't even need to have that parallel thinking, it, depending on, on the nature of the decision, because it can be done mecha mechanistically. That is the emerging today, and that is what the future is.